Hello, my name is Jennifer Demchak and welcome to today's webinar. I am a master's student in the safety science program at Indiana University. And I'm excited to share today's relevant topic. I will be discussing the influence of mental health on workplace safety. Today's webinar will be presented in PowerPoint fashion with a question and answer feature. You can ask questions using the Zoom chat and I will do my best to answer them throughout the webinar. If I can't, the answers will be posted within seven days on the PA OSHA consultation website. During today's webinar, we have four objectives. We will define mental health in general terms and how it relates to the workplace. We will discuss the influence of mental health on workplace safety. We will analyze the cost of mental health issues on the workplace. And finally, we will re recommend strategies to improve mental health of the worker, which will lead to a safer workplace. Let's first discuss mental health. Mental health has a variety of definitions, but according to the World Health Organization, it is defined as the ability to cope with normal life stresses and to participate in one's community. I chose this definition because it has the word stress in the definition and we will learn the importance of stress and workplace safety as we go through the webinar. Many psychologists refer to the mental health continuum model. As we move to the right on the spectrum and people become tired, procrastinate, have decreased performance, are distracted at work and are missing work, we can begin to see how mental health impacts workplace safety. A distracted worker is an unsafe worker. Let's look at workplace survey data. 64% of employees describe their jobs as stressful and 52% believe their mental health interfered with work. This is causing unsafe work environments for themselves and their coworkers. This stress is causing anxiety and a lack of interest in their work. They're missing more days and when they are at work, they are less productive. Workers are also developing physical illnesses such as headaches and muscle tension, along with more serious conditions such as heart disease. There is no OSHA standard for mental health, but it is covered by the general duty clause. Recently, this has been tested through court cases and judges have ruled in favor of the plaintiff. They have ruled that emotional abuse is an act of verbal assault. It causes a worker to have low self-esteem and become depressed or anxious and therefore creates an unsafe workplace. In addition to the general duty clause, there is a policy for enforcement procedures and scheduling for occupational exposure to workplace violence. This is a program to prevent workplace violence. It includes language for threats and emotional injuries, which makes the employer liable under the general duty clause. Even though mental health is part of the general duty clause, it is not recordable unless the employee volunteers the information. The 2004 guidance states that depression and anxiety is recordable as a work-related stress which contributes to an accident, but only if the employee volunteers that information. Now that we know that over 52% of workers believe mental health influences their workplace, what is the impact? So what are some basic facts? 
With mental illness comes the increased risk of substance abuse. We use drugs and alcohol to cope. In 2017, there were 272 workplace drug overdoses and 275 workplace suicides, which accounted for 20 for 10 percent of the workplace fatalities. Let's just think about that for a second. 10% of the fatalities were overdoses and suicides. Do you consider going to college a full-time job? If so, full-time students have the lowest mental health scores and the most significant mental health stress of any other sector in the workplace. Alcohol use increased by two times from March to May in 2020. But those with kids, alcohol use increased more from October to December of 2020, which was a delayed response. I think the many factors that accounted for this was homeschooling those kids while balancing work. February 2021 marked 11 consecutive months of a diminished mental health in the workplace. The increased workload, working from home, sharing workspace, all accounted for this. And overall, women have a lower health score than men. Do you agree with this? Is it because of women having more stress, more workload, balancing homeschooling. So why are we more stressed at work? Some of the reasons are we don't trust our coworkers or our managers. We're taking on heavy workloads and feeling burnout. We're being bullied or facing workplace violence. Or maybe we just have a boss that's mean to everyone or picks on us. So there are many reasons that we become stressed at work. The stress we're feeling may cause either anger or a fear response in most people. These anger emotions may um, come out as rage or jealousy and might even reach levels of sarcasm. Fear emotions might be suspicion or paranoia, and we might in turn isolate ourselves. Stress affects our body, our mind, our emotions, and our behavior. We start worrying and having impaired judgment. We're tired and depressed, and we become accident prone. All of these things together lead to more accidents in the workplace. So how we react to stress varies. Some people may focus that stress inward and cause more errors and accidents, creating that hazardous workplace. Others may waste time decreasing productivity. Others may feel that everything is their fault and become depressed, increasing substance abuse, which again may increase workplace accidents. The bottom line is that stress affects mental health, which in turn affects the workplace in a negative way. A worker suffering from stress and mental illness may be distracted, withdrawn, and exhausted. A worker who is not at 100% may cause an injury to themselves or a coworker. We need to take a few minutes and talk about workplace violence. With 24 hour news stations, whoops, with 24 hour news stations and social media, we know about these events as soon as they happen. It is defined by an action that threatens the safety of an employee, impacts their well being, or causes damage to the workplace. The violence may be caused by a threat of job loss, job pressure, and negative job performance, and sometimes personal problems. 
Warning signs may include empathy with violence at other facilities, bullying, mood swings, desperation over money, or even explosive outbursts. Ultimately, the violence may take the form of homicide or attempted homicide, assaults, vandalism, product contamination, arson, or suicide. Similar to the mental health continuum, there is a workplace violence continuum. It might begin with a coworker being disrespectful and then escalating to harassment and verbal assault, and then eventually physical violence. Statistics show it is the second leading cause of death for women in the workplace, and a majority of those being from domestic partners entering the workplace or waiting in parking lots before or after work. Over the past year, mental illness has increased dramatically across the US and globally. For workers, they have become isolated working from home and many have lost their jobs. They have increased their workload and are suffering from burnout, balancing jobs, homeschooling, and family time. They turn on the TV and see racism, riots, and shooting. Managers need to recognize the impact that COVID has on the workplace. As the National Institute for Healthcare Management graph shows, the pandemic has taken a toll on the mental health of workers. All employees show a decrease in motivation of 49% and morale has worsened by 45%. The largest difference between workers at home and on site is the stress at work. Workers at home have a 30% higher stress level, which makes sense. They might be homeschooling their kids, sharing workspace with spouses, family, and feeling more isolated. Keeping us safe from COVID has created many mental health issues that people don't want to talk about. What is burnout? It's defined as chronic workplace stress that is not successfully managed. We feel depleted of energy and are mentally distanced from the job. This is happening more often during COVID because of an increased workload due to staff shortages, the lack of understanding from management and aggressive leadership. They are making profit more important than safety. Burnout anytime leads to lower productivity, decreased quality of work, low commitment. So we are job searching, missing days, and there are higher turnover rates. This is increased during COVID. So now that we know that workers are stressed, feeling burned out, have lower productivity and are causing more accidents, Let's talk about the indirect and direct costs of mental health on the workplace. The indirect cost of mental health totals over $63 billion per year. It comes in the form of loss of productivity. Other indirect costs are a loss of public image from an increased accident rate, Morale is down when stress and depression increases and turnover rate increases. As companies lose employees, they must train new workers, which costs money. The total cost of mental health to employers is $500 billion annually. Depressed workers are absent at least one half days per week and 25% of workers say they have taken a mental health day to cope with stress. In addition, 
health care of those with mental issues are $10,000 annually versus $4,600 for those without the same mental health issues. Costs to employers can be seen in absenteeism. Workers with mental illness miss 27 days of work per year at a cost of $4,400. Presenteeism is when workers are distracted when they are at work. They lack time management skills, the ability to concentrate, are unable to perform physical tasks, and do not pay attention to details. This may lead to workplace accidents or loss of productivity costing the company money. Workers with mental illness are more likely to become unemployed after two years. An employer will spend $4,000 on recruitment, hiring, and retraining to replace those employees. What if a worker becomes injured at work or outside of work? What are those impacts to their mental health? Research shows that they are three times more likely to develop anxiety or mood disorders. Many are then prescribed pain medication and those drugs then impact the mental health of the worker. They increase the risk of developing depression, PTSD, and panic attacks. It then becomes much more difficult to integrate these workers back into the workplace successfully, increasing the cost to the employer even more. Now that we have discussed the mental health and the cost to the employers, Let's talk about strategies to improve the mental health of the worker. So what can our employers do? First, they need to create a mental health culture. This culture is reflected in the everyday norms of the company. Managers need to be supportive and get to know their employees to build a safe, trusting environment. Leaders should showcase values in guide behavior. They should show their workers how best to manage stress. All levels of an organization should play a role in building the mental health culture. Management should, should support programming and interact with workers in a positive, supportive way. Supervisors should never ridicule an injury or near miss, but should use it as a teachable moment. They should be positive and proactive. Employees should get involved and learn to understand their behavior and feelings. They need to take corrective actions when they start to feel stressed or depressed and get the help that they need before accidents occur. A mental health culture is built through awareness and providing accommodations for employees. Examples of accommodations might include a more private workspace to avoid distractions, enrolling in a mentoring program, or allowing a support animal in the workspace. Programs should be proactive and work towards decreasing the stigma of mental health in the workplace. Eight out of 10 workers say the stigma of mental health would stop them from seeking help at work. Education should focus on improving the total worker well being, which includes the mental, physical, and social worker health. Examples might include building emotional resilience of the worker. This would include increasing a worker's self esteem, coping skills, and developing mental calm. 
Focusing on the workplace will help with the development of a mental health culture. Building a social support system and inclusion at all levels of the company. Workplace plans should include training supervisors to provide emotional support to the employees and encouraging the workers to communicate their stressors. Both are methods of increasing the mental health culture of the workplace. Highlighting the positives of the workers and providing recognition through rewards helps to improve mental health. Workers feel appreciated and are more dedicated to the company. Providing resources and choices helps employees cope and keeps the workplace safer. It is critical for companies to provide programs to identify mental illness and offer counseling or self-management programs to increase the total worker health. Many companies have started offering mental health self-assessment tools or free screenings for their employees. To increase safety in the workplace, some companies are hosting workshops that address depression and stress management techniques. These activities focus on mindfulness and meditation to help employees reduce stress and improve focus. Benefits to help maintain a stress-free environment and improve total work health include wellness programs and services and wellness tips in newsletters and on social media. Employers should have access to programs such as flu vaccines, tobacco cessation programs, and on-site stress management programs. The company may offer wellness space such as quiet rooms, fitness centers, or on-site massage. Additional programs may include break rooms with free coffee and snacks, career development, services such as access to lawyers and house relocation programs. We now need to circle back to workplace violence because this needs to be addressed at the workplace. A prevention program can be written and should be implemented. It should include screening for warning signs during the interview process followed by violence prevention training. The program should include a zero tolerance policy and discipline procedures if the policy is broken, even if that means an employee is fired. Employees need to feel safe at work and the company leadership needs to promote a violence-free culture. OSHA does provide advisory guidelines for workplace violence, but no standard exists. It includes the commitment of management and employee involvement. The first step is developing a threat assessment team to identify the risks. Engineering controls are put into place, which includes alarms, metal detectors, and safe rooms. It ensures that record keeping and evaluation of incidents are kept on file. Let's summarize what we've learned today. Mental illness manifests as stress in the workplace. It is all encompassing and includes emotional, psychological, and social well being. Mental illness causes a decrease in work productivity, a lack of interest in work, anxiety, agitation, and depression. Mental illness can cause an increase to workplace injury and illness, a decrease in productivity, and an increase to direct and indirect cost. COVID has caused an increase in workplace illness and stress over the last year. I do have a list of references. If anyone is interested in additional information, please feel free to reach out. 
This webinar can be found on the PA OSHA consultation website. Thank you for attending today's webinar. Here you can find the contact information for the Pennsylvania OSHA consultation office. Have a wonderful day.